Hi guys, it's Mr. Wilson, the head teacher. Um, I've snuck into Mr. Ali's laboratory. He doesn't know, so don't tell him. Um, I thought what I'd do is share with you though, something I used to teach, uh, which was chemistry, one of my favorite areas, and one of my favorite areas, what's in a reaction. So, I remember when I was your age, mixtures and compounds were quite difficult to understand. What's the difference between a mixture and a compound? So, if I get my technology right, hopefully there'll be some lesson objectives appearing on the screen uh, to uh, the right of me. Uh, but what I want you to sort of get is that all elements are on the periodic table, and there are some differences between elements, mixtures, and compounds. And you're gonna take a look at some experiments I've done at home, which help distinguish what a mixture is and what a compound is. So, also up on the screen, there should be some success criteria, which once again, that's to help you understand whether you've really got it, have you understood it? So before you take a look at my experiment, so what I want you to do, I want you to go onto the website, www.rsc.org forward slash periodic hyphen table. And on there, there's an online periodic table. You can click on the elements, and then you can actually look at the different characteristics of the different elements. Now, group one of the periodic table is my favorite group, and that's because it's the most reactive. So you might wanna start there because some of the properties of those elements are quite interesting, okay? Particularly uh, some of the uh, very, very significant reactive elements like rubidium and some of those elements. Okay, so I'll give you 10 minutes to do that. Off you go. Hi guys, it's me again. Shh. I'm in Mr. Ali's uh, store cupboard now, hence the hazardous substances. Now, I've got a quick test for you to test your periodic knowledge. So, the first, what I want you to do is come up with the chemical symbol for these elements. Are you ready? First one is plutonium. Second one is carbon. Next one is nitrogen. Fourth one is lead. And the fifth one is sodium. Right, we're going to switch it now. So what I want you to do now, I'm going to give you the chemical symbol and you're going to give me the name. So the chemical symbol for the next one is H, O, C, L, H, E, and the last one, F, E. Right, we're going to switch it back again. So what's the chemical symbol for xenon? The chemical symbol for krypton, the chemical symbol for sulfur, and the chemical symbol for aluminium, not aluminium, and the chemical symbol for potassium. And we'll switch it one more time. So the chemical symbol is Ca. So what's the element? Chemical symbol is Au. What's the element? Chemical symbol is Li. What's the element? Chemical symbol is Si, what's the element? And last one, the chemical symbol is Ag, so what is the element for Ag? That should give you a score out of 20, and it might be worth getting your mum, dad, or older brother or sister just to mark your work. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Hi guys, it's me again. One last challenge. What I want you to do is watch my videos from home about mixtures and compounds and then I want to see if you can do some of the extension tasks we've set at the end of this video. So I'm gonna leave you to my video because I think I can hear Mr. Ali come in. So I'll see ya. Hey, so welcome to my kitchen. Um, today we're gonna to be looking at mixtures and compounds. A mixture is quite simple. They're made up of more than one element. So an example, we've got some Skittles here. So the yellow ones, these represent element one. We've got some uh, chocolate buttons which re represent element two and some green skittles which will represent element three. To make a mixture you just need to put all of the elements together. And the key thing to a mixture is a mixture can be separated quite easily so I can separate them back into the original elements with real ease. The way to think of a mixture is that there's mixtures all around us in the air. There's oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, argon and carbon. Another example would be we've got here water. 
H2O, two hydrogen, one oxygen atom, and what we know is salt or sodium chloride, NaCl. Now if we put salt with water, we get a very simple mixture, salt water or seawater. If we were to add, add heat and we captured the steam and then we condensed the steam so that it formed water again, what would be left in here would be salt. So we've got a mixture because we've separated back to our original two elements. To make a compound is a bit harder because compounds don't separate very easily. So we've got our mixture here of our element one, two and three. And I'm going to put that on some heat and that's to give us a chemical reaction because the heat will change the solid element two, the chocolate, into a liquid. We've had our chemical reaction, our element 2 has melted into a liquid and all the elements are combining. Now, if we take our compound and we'll spread it out onto this tray now, what we've got there is a different substance, a mixture which has been put together but very difficult to separate. I've made one earlier, this is now a compound and as you can see if I try and break this I can't get it back to the original form, it's very difficult because I've still got elements of the element 2 all over so this is now a compound.